Today on FinChute we're going to learn how to use the powerful charting package within Bloomberg. This is going to be an introductory session where we learn how to find graphs and chart them and how to use some technical studies. To begin with type in chart at the top left hand side. Hit enter. What you'll see up the top is chart of the day which is related to news panel for custom charts, sample charts, chart resources and chart showcase. All of these have their place especially for a beginner. Looking at the creating a custom chart if we click on this this will take us to beginning to use a chart wizard. You may do this once or twice but after this that will probably be the last time you'll use it. So you start off with a standard G chart, a two security spread or ratio chart, a seasonality chart, scrolling tick or case bar chart, a point and figure chart, a scatter chart, or you can click on chart templates or you can click on chart templates which will display a series of other charts for you. If we click on next this will take me to my chart templates. The other way to get to a chart is to type up what you're looking for in the top box, click on it and then go to the chart tables and technicals. What you have here is the menu for charts, tables and technicals that are associated with the ticker that you've chosen. For example, most of the time when we trade we want to look at historical bar charts or open, high, low, close charts. So if I click on this and I'm away, immediately what I can see is an open, high, low, close chart with moving averages and I can turn those off or on by just simply popping zero in. Then I have a one year chart. If I want to manipulate this chart I can click on daily and change this to 30 days for 60 minutes for example. If I want to move in, zoom in, all I need to do is put my mouse down the bottom and drag it to the left or to the right and if I want to change my y-axis I can simply drag that up and down as well. This is quite handy when I'm looking or looking to drill into studies to get a feel for what's happening and who and why it's occurring. If I hit the chevron here this brings me up what I'm currently looking at. I may then want to add for example another security to panel 1. In this case I want to look at Euro dollar against the Aussie. Now what you'll see is I have the Euro dollar on the in the yellow and the Aussie in the white. I want to make the Euro dollar look the same, so I click on the edit box, change the type to open, high, low, close, update. Now you'll see that I have my Aussie and my Euro dollar on the same axis. This is okay but can be difficult to read as I move my chart further out. What I want to do is go back in, hit the pencil and change my display to Y axis R2 update and what this does now is it displays my chart with two y-axes so I can get a feel for how each currency moves together and against each other and what we can see is that there's a high correlation with the Aussie except for recently where this correlation seems to have broken down. Clicking the chevron gives me my full screen view. What I might want to do is start adding on different pieces of analysis. So for example security study I now may want to add a study. So if I know what it's called I might want to add it in. Let's say I'm adding in Bollinger. Bollinger Bands, click on this and it will bring up Bollinger Bands in a default setting. What I have is 
my Bollinger percentages width and what you can see is it's placed my Bollinger bands onto my chart directly. I can toggle between these simply by clicking on and off. Further, I might want to add yet another study. Simply click Add Study. I may want to put in MACD, Moving Average, Convergence, Divergence. Click on this and this will allow me to add my MACD down the bottom. And straight away I can see that this has been added. I can then move these narrower or wider depending on what part of the chart I want to focus on and what I see is valuable. Now that I've built this, I can now save my chart by hitting Save As. This allows me to put a name in. For example, save it as a template so I can use it with any security or save it as a chart with displayed security. The difference being if I save it as a chart with the displayed security every time I enter that chart it will automatically bring up what I was using previously. If I save it as a template chart what, I, what ticker I have chosen will be displayed for it. In this case I'm going to hit uh, Jason's chart and save and now it's saying it's number 99 and I've done that. I'm going to hit open chart and it's going to reopen the chart that I just saved. If I wanted to toggle some of these pieces off and on, what I do is just click up the top, off and off and that will remove them from my screen. If I wanted to go back and simplify or start amending some of the things on my chart, all I do is hit edit. I have securities and data and in here are all of the data fields that I can change. So I can add a series of data to panel 1 or panel 2. I can normalize my data which is quite handy when you're looking at uh, long statistical studies. I can add and change my colors so not only of my open high low close bar but I can also change my background for my charts simply by clicking on the color palette. I've changed this to red, hit update and my background will now appear as red. While it's difficult to read a lot of people like to do this. If I jump, jump back into chart colors and styles, turn my back to black and I'm away back to where it should be uh, normally. If I go back into edit I can then start playing with date range and then I can start adding legends to it. This will give me names, uh, allow, me, allow me to show statistics, high, low and average and look at percentages, net and so on and so forth. This is a brief summary of, the, of setting up an initial chart on Bloomberg. Thank you for listening to Finchute.